Hello, my friends. Welcome back to part three of our options trading masterclass. Today, we're talking about my option strategy, continuing on from the session number two. If you want to check that out in its entirety, check out that end card right there. But my name is Andrew Ferguson, and I run a company called Trading Options Daily, where my goal, my sole mission in life is to help educate 10,000 investors just like yourself, learn how to invest with stock options only 30 minutes a day so you can live your dream life. We've been talking about what stock options are. We've talked about how I start to use them. And we're going to dive into that more today with session number three. Let's do it. So in session number three of my stock hacking strategy, we're talking first and foremost of time decay, which is another one of the Greeks. We talked about Delta last time. We're talking about Theta this time. These are the two Greeks you need to know, and they really do impact your stock trading returns. So we want to use that to our advantage. We're actually going to go fishing and we want to uh, learn how to like, rotate your capital. When I actually went fishing for the first time, out of a boat, um, it's like an exhilarating feeling. And what, what you want, you want to give back the minnows and sacrifice the little guys to go and land the big fish. That's the mindset we're looking at right now. We we're talking about the risky stuff. Like nothing in life is risk-free here. We want to learn the risks are with the options trading. We want to avoid them. And a big part of like knowing what the risks are. And then you can proceed accordingly once you understand what they are. It's kind of like in the Hurt Locker. Like if you've seen that movie with Jeremy Renner, he's defusing bombs, but he knows what he's doing. He's got a suit on for protection. So is there danger? Yes. But not as much as like if Anthony Mackie in that movie, who's like his buddy goes down there and was just guessing at what was going on or you and I want to do it. So those are what we're doing today. And what I really want to do is just show you how you can really get the momentum going and build on those 30% returns. And I actually like show you how it's actually possible, how I do it and how it actually works. Let's go through this and let's get into it here. So theta, using time decay to your advantage. And what theta is, it is the rate of time decay on an options contract. So because every contract has an expiration date. It is not infinite. Like it, it does end at some point. It's a contract right, with an expiration date. And it's kind of like the rate of the ice melting in the sun. So here's what I mean. It's, it's super bad for the environment and the polar bears are pissed off. The penguins are all sunburned, but it's really good for us when we're selling put options. Again, we're selling put options. Talk about that in lesson number two. Go back and review if you need to. But each put option that we sell, it's a block of ice. And that option contract is a block of ice sitting there in the sun and the ice is melting. And when that ice melts, that's value going into our pockets. And that's the value of the put option actually decreasing. We talked about Delta, right? We want the ice to melt and the contract value to go down. The faster it goes down, the better. And if we can add Delta and Theta together, that ice melts very differently and very quickly for us as options sell. We capture more premium. Now, Theta decays at different rates. And what I mean by that is there are different expiration dates that will give you more theta return than others. And this is important to know because a lot of people get this wrong. Theta speeds up around the 45 day mark and goes all out under 30 days. What this means is that the ice melts fastest at the 30 day mark. And we want to have our contracts around that 30 day expiration when we sell them. That's why I gave the example that we showed last class that I showed you was a 28, 29 day expiration just because it's around that 30 day mark. And we want to put that block of ice outside and just have the sun beating down on it, get a hair dryer out, boom, hit the hair dryer onto your block of ice as well. That's what you're doing when you're harnessing the power of theta. So assuming you have a hair dryer, I don't, but my wife tells me it's useful. You can harness the power and have theta decay quickly for you and add more dollars to your bottom line. Now, the thing about theta, and this is another thing that people kind of mess up, is that the contract has to be out of the money for theta to actually help us kind of melt that ice cube. Each day that put contract is out of the money, Theta will kind of melt a bit more of that ice. And if you'll remember, out of the money is a put option that is lower than the current stock price. So if we don't do that though, and we sell at the money or in the money, then Theta is actually, we're fighting with it. And it's gonna have the reverse effect. It's like putting the chunk of ice back into the freezer and you're gonna start adding to that block of ice and the price of the contract is going to increase, which we don't want as options. So we want the price to keep going down of the option contract. That happens when the price of the stock goes up. That happens when theta decay actually works its magic. Okay. Can contracts go out of the money to in the money? You may, yeah, you may uh, like honestly just sell a put contract that is out of the money initially, and then the stock price is going to drop. And that happens. That's happened a lot this year, actually. It's been a tough year, tough to manage, but it will drop to the point where it becomes in the money. And then when that happens again, right, it's going to have the reverse effect. So if we sold the put, at 155 in this example, which is green, which is out of the money first. It started out of the money. And then the stock price dropped to 140, which it could happen. It, it, is, it is volatile. The stock market does go up and down. Everything in the box there that's shown on that chart would be in the money, which means that theta would be working against us. And that's just that's just the reality of the stock market that has 
to be the case 25% of the time, roughly, depending on your delta. In this case, it's a 21% chance of that happening. When we sell the contract, we accept those odds as traders. But when we sell the contracts and they stay out of the money, theta works in our favor and that ice melts quickly. If you buy options contract on the flip side, if you buy puts or calls, whatever you're gonna do, theta is actually the force that's one of the forces that are working against you, which makes it even more difficult to buy contracts in options. That's why I like to sell them and specifically sell naked puts. So what is our best case scenario here? Well, if our theta is working in our favor and that ice and that hair dryer is like full on and the block is melting, and delta, if you remember, is also working in our favor and the stock price is increasing. That means our contract or our put option value is decreasing. We will be able to close out our trade early and repeat the process. Which brings us to the how to rotate your capital section of this lesson. And that's throwing back the minnows, as I said, to land the big fish, like something there in the picture. So remember this concept. If you don't remember anything of this lesson, just remember this. When you're selling options and you're selling put options specifically, you sell to open. You are selling to open, you sell to open, and then you want to exit your trade on the back end and you want to buy back to close. So buy back to close is the finisher, sell to open is the beginning. Say it with me right now. Sell to open, buy back to close. That's the tick you gotta remember. After you sell a put, this is what's gonna happen to you. You're gonna be waiting. You're going to be sitting there just hanging out. It's going to be a little bit boring at first, but you're going to be waiting for theta to melt some of that ice. We want this to be boring. Remember, Ryan Reynolds says it best. Boring is best. We want, hopefully, have delta on our side as well, and that helps us out, and the underlying of the stock price goes up. And if those two things are working in tandem, the ice block is melting very quickly, and we'll have enough profit to buy back our positions early. Remember, buy back to close, and we'll close out our position at a profit. So now you might be thinking, like, well, Andrew, why would I do that when I can just kind of let the contract expire and like capitalize on all the, all the premium? Well, there's a couple of reasons because number one, the stock market is volatile. There are times when you want to take risk off the table and maybe this comes from your technical analysis ability where the chart's not looking good or maybe earnings are coming up and you wanna kind of take some of that risk away of the stock potentially moving lower. So you take that risk off the table, you buy back to close. Number two, we want to always be finding the best value of our capital. So when we're trading and we're kind of looking for the best value in trades, we're looking at things like volatility, we're looking at things like premium that we're going to get back, we're looking at our time commitment. We want to rotate our capital into the trades that are going to give us the best returns all the time. And if we can do that, we'll get down to number three, which is increasing our returns by making the best trades we can, buying back to close early, and just limiting our risk overall in our portfolio. So again, say it with me, sell to open, buy back to close. And when we look at this and we apply it to the same chart we looked at before, we start with the same thing at the top. We sell naked put contract. Okay, we've just added this kind of like secret step on the left-hand side. We would still kind of wait until the contract is going to expire and we can either keep the premium and repeat when it does, or in this case, we're going to buy back to close, give back some premium, close out the trade and re repeat at a quicker rate to hopefully juice up our returns. Find another trade and make more money is exactly what we're gonna do. So remember our example with our insurance contract, right? We sold it for one month, we got paid the $500 and we bought back the contract for $50 after three weeks. We're doing the same thing with our options trading. So if we sold a put option for $300, right? With a 30-day uh, till expiration, 30-day contract, and after 20 days, we buy back to close, we take the risk of being assigned those shares off the table, and we have to give back 60, but we keep 240. So, so we just pocketed $240 in 20 days. Why would we wait another 10 days for the contract to expire and only make $60, right? We wanna make another like another contract to make that 240. We want to, don't do that. We wanna go and buy back and close and go find another deal where we can make another 240 in 20 days. So we're gonna give up a small percentage of our premium and we're gonna go find better trades and make more money. That's how it works. So this is where the 80% rule comes in when it looks at stock options trading with put options, the way that I like to do it. After you sell a put option, we want to wait until it decays in value by 80%. Then we buy back to close and we rotate our capital into a new trade to make more money. Giving back that $60 like we talked about to give back 60, keep 240, look for another trade that's gonna make us 240 in 20 days. That's the idea, okay, 80% rule. By giving back the minnows again, we keep kind of throwing the line back out there and kind of looking for the bigger fish. And sometimes this is how you land the super size returns. It just takes time to build up and get good at this. But eventually once you do, you'll be able to okay, 
okay, I can take this trade off. I can buy back here. I can buy back there. I can leave this one here, but you're going to understand which ones are going to be the most like kind of higher risk, close those off, pocket the money, say, thank you very much. Go on and find another trade to make you more cash. So now let's talk about some of the risks with options trading. And this is very important stuff. If you don't have a plan, you can get blown up. Your account can get wiped out. Let's talk about it right here in this, in this lesson. So nothing in the investment in world and nothing in life generally is, is risk-free. There's always something that could happen. It's about understanding and quantifying it. And when you do that, you kind of give yourself options to pivot and allocate yourself to better to deal with it. And this is what I'm trying to do here today is just give you an idea of what could happen when you trade options, when you trade put options and sell put options, this is what could happen to you. This is the, the kind of the risk that you're going to play with. So if you use margin and what all margin is, is that you're going to be able to, in your account, if you set it up through interactive brokers, like I do, given the steps that I've been showing you, you'll be able to deposit your money and you'll be able to trade uh, roughly three times your amount in your, in your account. So if you deposit hundred thousand dollars, you'll be able to trade up to $300,000. This is margin, but you don't want to do that. You don't ever want to trade with margin. You just have to have that certain account to be able to sell put options with interactive brokers in that account. I believe this is very general across the board. Like most accounts won't let you do put options if you don't it have margin accounts. So when you use margin, it can be go bad. If you get a margin call, if you're actually using that 300,000 and you don't just stick the 100,000 you put in, you're using the brokerage's money. They lend you extra cash to make the trades. And if you're doing that and the market kind of corrects in a way that you don't want it to, and it does it sharply, you get what's called a margin call. And this is when the brokerage goes into your account, which they are very, very licensed to do. They will sell as much as they need to or close your positions to rebalance your account and limit risk on their end. So if you are maxed out and you have $300,000 in the market, market sells off and you only put in 100K of your own money, they don't want to lose 200K of their money. So they're going to sell your cash off, get some of their money back and limit their risk. And this could wipe out your entire account. When I first started trading options and doing this, I had half my account wiped out in a margin call back in 2020. The COVID epidemic hit. Their markets pulled back by 30% in a couple of weeks. My account was kind of levered up with a little bit of margin. I lost half my account. Buyer beware, seller beware. That's a reality that could happen. It can happen very quickly. I thought I had lots of room, lots of time. It happened, boom, boom, and I was done. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't use margin. If you do know what you're doing, I still advocate don't use margin, okay? If you deposit 10K, only trade up to 10K. Don't go above and use margin. That's a way to get into uh, trouble. And here's how you can convert for it. If you're Canadian, if you're doing it in a Canadian account, this is how you can convert. If you're in a U.S. account, this doesn't apply. You can just use the same mathematics, but don't add a conversion in for the U.S. dollars. So if you were to sell two contracts, the strike price of $35, the math works like this. It's two contracts times $35 times 100 because every contract member is made of 100 shares. And then we just multiply by the exchange rate here in Canada. It's around 1.26, give or take. It kind of fluctuates. But the premise is that you want to convert for US dollars. And if you're in US and you're using US dollars from begin with, don't add the conversion at the end. You don't have to add this 1.6. Just give these first three numbers a look. And when you do that, you're going to see that you have capital left to trade of just over $1,000, $1,180 left to trade. So if you go above that on your next trade, you'll be using margin, which is what you don't want to do. And here's the, here's the old quote from the stock market from people that are invested a long time. They say, bears make money. So people who bet on the market to go down, bulls make money betting on the market to go up, but pigs who kind of play it both ways are just going kind of go and get too greedy. Pigs get slaughtered. So being reckless with your trading is a not following the system. It is being piggish and you can get slaughtered and get your account blown up real quick when you do that. So my advice to you as new beginners or even experienced people, do not use margin in your account. Only use the cash that you have that you are willing to lose yourself. Don't use margin. Not worth it, in my opinion. You also need to worry about following your own path. And just because you're here on this train doesn't mean you have to be an option seller. But I do want you to think about how you're going to invest and have a defined strategy. We talked about being a master of one and a jack of none last time. And that's, that's a whole street. Like when you're doing this and you're learning, you're kind of making your mistakes and feeling it out. You need to master your own approach first and don't get those kind of shiny objects kind of all the way around. You want to get good on one thing and master it and then work to kind of improve it over time. You don't know anyone else, what their trading situation is. You don't know how much capital they have. You don't know how much experience they have. You don't know kind of what people they have in their ear telling them different things or teaching them. So if you look at somebody else for like advice all the time, you're going to eventually be reliant on them. You want to be reliant on yourself. Even though I'm teaching this, you want to be reliant on you, not on me. I want to show you, kind of give you the roadmap. I want you guys to be able to go and drive the car and do it yourself. What you also don't want to do in my opinion, this is, this is blown up for me as well, is picking unproven companies. 
and I've had to be, be eat big losses. So stick to the companies with solid fundamentals. And I've, I've chased premium before where it wasn't a good trade. It wasn't a good company. I just, I just lost capital. It's just plain and simple. So the majority of capital and companies that survive are the ones that make the most money. And if you want to invest in uh, good companies, just stick to the big ones, stick to the blue chippers, try to stay away from some of the up and comers that are kind of more attractive in terms of how much money you get bank for your buck, but you don't want to invest and lose capital. So try to have like an even kind of risk profile in your, in your portfolio. Another thing you want to do is just not being too aggressive. You want to let Theta, let Delta do their thing. It's why we sell out of the money puts. It's because the stock price can go up. It can stay the same or it can go down a little bit and we can still win as option sellers. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to sell out of the money, you're in a good place. But if you're going to sell at the money, you're in the money. It makes this very hard to do. So just think about that when you're in your trades and looking how aggressive you're being. So think, think about your risk tolerance as well and just kind of go from there. And back to it again, boring is always best. We want to do this in less than 30 minutes a day. We don't want to overthink things. We want to have a repeatable process with check boxes to be able to go through and say, boom, boom, boom. Is this good? Yes. No. Okay. Move on. And then, and then you go from there. So, so that's nuts and bolts of my strategy. Like that's all I ever do is just go through the list, go through my companies, make sure that they're good risk on risk reward. And I look at my phone 30 minutes a day, try to keep it very minimal, follow a process. And you have everything now in the last two sessions to do that yourself. So if you want to start trading in a paper account, make sure you check out this end card right here. And if you want to kind of check out more videos on the channel, I recommend you that you subscribe and keep learning as we kind of keep progressing through this technical session. Next time we're talking about technical analysis, fundamental analysis and future videos, but how to actually value companies, value stocks, look at the chart and more. If you want to check out the next video in this series, make sure you click right here.